Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Vessalatu vesselam ala seyyidil mursalin. Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellim teslimen kethira. Rabbena lekel hamdu kema yenbeği li celali veçik kuli azimi sultanik. Subhaneke la nuhsi thena ana aleyke ent kema thdeyt ala nefsik. Allahumma salli ve sellim ve barik ala seyyidin على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters this is our concluding section our segment inshallah of this brief exploration of the Ta'af al-Ma'arif the chapter in Ramadan the subtleties of knowledge Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali uh, dealing with Ramadan and we were focusing primarily on the poetry trying to contextualize that sometimes with some of the prose but focusing on the poetry Alhamdulillah uh, this is a, a wonderful wonderful uh, example of the richness of our theological scholastic uh, uh, linguistic tradition May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir. So we're going to start, inshallah ta'ala. And now the uh, the shift is from the last days of Ramadan, the last 10 days generally, to the night of power that lies therein. And so you'll notice as we go along that shift. We'll start with more general, just the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah. For those who might uh, think that the mercy escapes them. فَقَالَ الْمُسَنِّفُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ وَنَفْعَانَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَبِكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So the author says, may Allah have mercy on him and benefit us through him and for all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Ikhwani, my brothers, this is a call to the sisters also. المعول على القبول لا على الاجتهاد that the thing to be dependent on is Allah accepting our actions and not on our exertion in performing the action the exertion is necessary but not sufficient sufficiency comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْعْتَبَارُ بِبِرِّ الْقُلُوبِ لَا بِعَمْلِ الْأَبْدَانِ And what's considered is the righteous state of the heart and not the actions of the bodies. رُبَّ قَائِمٍ حَظُّهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ السَّهَرِ Perhaps one who stands for prayer at night, his, the portion, he, what he gets from his prayer is another, none other than sleeplessness. كَمْ مِنْ قَائِمٍ مَحْرُومٌ how many of those who stand for worship are deprived acceptance? Women na'im and marhumun. And how many of those who are sleeping are recipients of divine mercy? This one is sleeping while his heart or her heart is in a state of remembrance. وَهَذَا قَامَ وَقَلْبُهُ فَاجِرٌ And that one is standing for worship, but his heart or her heart is corrupt. And then he mentions a line of poetry. إِنَّ الْمَقَادِرَ إِذَا سَعَدَتْ أَلْحَقَتِ النَّاعِمَ بِالْقَائِمِ When the vicissitudes of fate or fortune assist a person, then the one who is sleeping can join the one who is standing for worship. Uh, we mentioned the last uh, episode or se uh, segment, I think I did, the hadith that's attributed to the Prophet uh, so the one who is eating and thanking Allah 
for their food and for his grace upon them is in the rank of the one who is fasting and patiently enduring the rigors of the fast. So I say that to say here he's mentioning the na'im, one who's sleeping, might be joined with the one who's standing for worship. Based on what? Based on the heart. وَلَكِنَّ عَبْدَ مَأْمُورٌ بِالسَّعِيِ فِي اكْتِسَابِ الْخَيَرَاتِ وَالْاجْتِهَادِ فِي الْعَمَالِ الصَّالِحَاتِ But the servant has been commanded to strive to uh, earn uh, good and to exert and to exertion in un undertaking or performing righteous deeds. So what we mentioned about the sleeper, this is just to emphasize how important the state of the heart is in the affair of the believer and in the affair of the sadiq, one who's journeying purposefully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he, there's a fairly long, <clears throat> long uh, section of poetry that he uh, quotes concerning uh, those who've squandered their life up to this point and wasted the opportunities to perform righteous deeds, to be with the righteous people, just a squandered opportunity, just emphasizing their state and their affair is not hopeless. So he says, تَوَلَّ الْعُمْرُ فِي سَهَوٍ وَفِي لَهَوٍ وَفِي خُسْرِ That my life is passed by in heedlessness, in amusement, and in loss. فَيَا دَعِعَتَا مَا أَنْفَقْتُ فِي الْأَيَّامِ مِنْ عُمْرِي And how, how much loss has been occurred through that which I've spent of my day, of the days of my life. So the days of our life are like currency. We're either spending them in good and spending them to purchase beneficial things for our soul and our hereafter, or we're squandering them, like someone who goes to a casino. <clears throat> so life can be like a casino. Or life can be like a an interest-free bank, inshallah. It's up to us in terms of where we deposit our money, if you will. And I have no excuse for what I've squandered from my life, from my lifetime. فَمَا أَغْفَلَنَا عَنْ وَاجِبَاتِ الْحَمْدِ وَالشُّكْرِ What has made us so heedless and in terms of undertaking the duties of praise and thanks of gratitude that are owed from us? And if we do are thankful, we'll have an increase. Then Allah give us tawfiq. أما قد خصنا الله بشهر أيما شهري Allah has designated us we mentioned this the other day like we are a small, small minority 2 billion Muslims out of 9 billion people on this earth is a relatively relatively small minority and so if you're Muslim Allah has designated and distinguished you to be a Muslim he's distinguished us to be Muslims and we, from those nine billion, we have been chosen. He has chosen you. He has chosen us. So we shouldn't look at our being Muslim as something random. We should look at it as an honor that our Lord has bestowed upon us when he chose us for this path. Uh, أَمَا قَدْ قَصَّنَ اللَّهُ بِشَهْرٍ أَيَّمَا شَهْرِ So Allah has designated and distinguished us to have this month and what a month it is. بِشَهْرٍ أَنزَلَ الرَّحْمَانُ فِيهِ أَشْرَفَ الذِّكْرِ A month during which the most merciful has revealed the most noble of scriptures, the most noble of reminders, referring to the Qur'an, ذِكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ the wise reminder, remembrance. Does any other month resemble it when it contains the night of power? 
بما فيها من الخير how many sound and rigidly authenticated hadith have been narrated concerning what the night of power contains of good and virtue and benefit روينا عن ثقات أنها قضبوا في الوتر it's been related by sound narrators that it is to be sought out during the last the odd nights of the last 10 days فتوبة لمرئ يطلبها في هذه في هذه العشر and paradise is for the person who seeks it out during these 10 nights ففيها تنزل الأملاك بالأنوار والبر during it the angels descend with light and goodness and we should reflect on the reality of light brothers and sisters that we when we cultivate our hearts there's a light that grows up in our hearts the light of guidance the light of truth nur al huda nur al sidqi these lights nur al imani the light of faith and then it shines throughout the entirety of our being. So the angels, they bring light and they bring righteousness and good. الفجر, and the, uh, the, the angel says, peace until the crack of dawn. ألا فدخ ألا فدخروها إنها من أنفس الضخري. So uh, store up the good that it contains. It's the most precious of things to be stored up. فكم من معتق فيها من النار ولا يدري. How many souls are liberated from the hellfire on Laylatul Qadr without even realizing it? So our Lord has subtle blessings and our Lord has ten, immediately tangible blessings. Things we perceive immediately and things that we won't perceive. Some things we won't perceive until the day of judgment. Yomuddin. But then we will readily know what the reference is to in terms of the, the source of the good that we enjoy. Allah's Rahim and Allah's Kareem and Allah's everything in between. Brothers and sisters, praise Allah, thank Allah. Be in a state of shukr and you will be in a state of increase. If you give thanks, I will increase you in my blessings. This is the nature of the affair, brothers and sisters. So, Allahumma salli wa rasulillah. So he, he's talking about those who love Allah. Because later to Qadr, that's the appointed time. That's when the, the lover meets the beloved. During that great, great, great night. So he says, introducing a few lines of poetry. المحبون تطول عليهم الليالي فيعدونها عدل عدا لانتظار ليل العشر في كل عام. This is the lovers, uh, the nights are long, and they count them. Mean the many, the, there are many, and they count them and count them, waiting for the last ten nights of Ramadan. Every year. فَإِذَا ظَفِرُوا بِهَا نَالُوا مَطْلُوبَهُمْ وَقَدَمُوا مَحْبُوبَهُمْ And if they attain to those days, if they attain and if they are, are victorious in attaining to those days that they're said they've attained what they've been seeking out and they serve their beloved. And we serve our beloved with ibadah. Our service is performed by devotional acts. Our shukr, more than anything, is performed by devotional acts. 
When Aisha radiallahu anha qalat Aisha radiallahu anha Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yaqoom min al-layl hatta tawarrama Un tafattara qadamahu Faqultu ya ya Rasul lima tasnu hada ya Rasul Allah Waqad ghafara Allah laka ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma taakhar فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أفلا أحب أن أكون عبدا شكورا. So Aisha relates that the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him used to stand in prayer at night until his feet swole, until his feet cracked, to warrما, to swell, to فطرا, to crack. وأصلهما Tatafattara uh, tatawarrama and the tat from the fifth and sixth forms in the present tense verb, the mudari' can be unmentioned. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And, and, and they serve their beloved. Uh, we should live, uh, a, a lot of us. No one specifically, so don't feel, he's talking about me. A lot of us, generally speaking, we don't live our lives with a conscious awareness of how meticulously we should be serving our Lord. We should be serving our Lord. And as I said, the greatest acts of service are with our devotional acts. May Allah give us tawfiq. Then he, I said that, introduced a few lines of poetry. قَدْ مَزَّقَ الْحُبُّ قَمِيسَ sabri That love has torn up the garment of patience. Refer reference to Yusuf and Zulaikha the first encounter between the two. So love has torn up the garment, the shirt of patience. And I've reached the morn confused about my, my affair. Oh, how I long and how, how, how painfully I long for those noble nights. And there are nothing except like the nights that contain the night of power. And if they return to me after this painful separation, I will be faithful in every oath I've sworn to Allah. Implicitly, we apply, all of us, when we read the Quran, we implicitly make an oath, a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we read a qul, say to them, Ya Muhammad, qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya وَمَحْيَايَا وَمَمَاتِ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say to them, O Muhammad, verily, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living, my dying, are all for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. With this I have been commanded, and I am the first to submit as a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So we read it, but do we mean it? My prayer, my sacrifice, my living, my dying are all for Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. قميص الصبر وقد غدوت حائرا في أمري آه آه على تلك ليال الغر ما كن إلا كليال القدر 
أن عدنا لي من بعد هذا الهجر وفيت لله بكل نذر وقام بالحمد خطيب الشكر and the the sermoner the uh, spokesperson of my gratitude will stand and praise وقام بالحمد خطيب الشكر لا إله إلا الله there, there's so many this last session is filled with poetry and verses la ilaha illallah so uh in prose in the rajab he says rahimahullah riyah hadhi al ashari tahmilu anin al mudhibin wa anfas al muhibbin wa qasas al taibin thumma ta'udu bi rabd al jawab bila kitab la ilaha illallah the the winds of these late nights. So the ashar is when you get up early to take the suhoor, pre-dawn, these pre-dawn moments. The winds of these pre-dawn moments carries the moaning of the sinners and the breaths of the of the lovers and the stories of the of the penitent. And then they they return to respond with the answer without any written message. La ilaha illallah, Sayyiduna Muhammadun Rasulullah, Sayyiduna Muhammadun Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Afwan, excuse me. It's a little cheat sheet. Tell me where to go so I don't have to spend all night flipping through pages. Uh, so right before a final section uh, dealing with the Alhamdulillah uh, Rasulillah called Farewell to Ramadan Al-Majl Sadis Fi Wada'i Ramadan The sixth section dealing with bidding farewell to Ramadan uh, He has some interesting things to say Alhamdulillah Rasulillah Uh, amongst them, now, وكان بعض ال وكان بعض المتقدمين يقول في دعائه اللهم إن ذنوبي قد عظمت فجلت عن الصفة وإنها صغيرة في جنب عفوك فعف عني لا إله إلا الله. What is the du'a of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم? taught us to make during these last 10 nights Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni Allah, you embody pardoning, you love to pardon, pardon me So he says one of the early Muslims Mutaqaddimin used to say, and uh, particularly of scholars, Mutaqaddimin, Mutaqhirin, the early scholars, the latter day scholars. One of the early uh, day scholars, he used to say in his dua, Oh Allah, verily my sins are great. They uh, defy any description, they're, they're above any description, they're beyond description. And ver but verily they are small when compared to your forgiveness and your pardoning. Pardon me for my sins. Another of them said, Jurmi Adimun wa Afuka Kabirun Fajma Bainu Jurmi wa Afuka Ya Karimu. That my sin is great and your for your pardoning is great. Join between my sin and your pardoning. Why? Because these, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the scantiness of my sin will disappear 
and the vast ocean of your pardoning and forgiveness. So join them together. As they say, Al-Kabir min al-Qalil, Qalil. A lot from a little is a little. So we are little, we are nothing. So even when we sin great, 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 great sinners, it's nothing because it emanates from little old us. That's why there was nothing for Allah to forgive the man who killed 100 people. You all know the hadith. 99, then he killed the Abid, who said there was no forgiveness for them, for him. 100 people, Allah forgave him. He never did a righteous deed in his life other than making an effort to go to the good man to join the good people. No prayer, no zakat, no salah, no Quran. This was before our ummah. No reading of the scripture at that time. None of it. After killing 100 people, Allah forgave them. How great is Allah's forgiveness, brothers and sisters? And so he said, join between my sin and your pardon. Oh, the most generous. Ya Karim. Ya Karim. Then he mentions a couplet. Ya kabir dhambi afullahi min dhambika akbaru. Akbarul awzari fi jambi afwillahi yasghuru. Oh, the one who has done great sins, the pardoning of Allah is greater than your sin. And the greatest of sins compared to the forgiveness of Allah becomes small. Al Kabira, bi jambi afwillahi sagira. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysiyah. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysiyah. Then, as we said, there's a section dealing with bidding farewell to Ramadan. This section is a beautiful section. If you have the book and you can read Arabic, I encourage you to read this section. It will inspire you. It will uplift you. It will bring tears to your eyes in many instances. Bismillah. Allah's kareem, brothers and sisters, kareem, rahim. So in that section, bidding farewell to Ramadan, amongst what is related, man and Allah is the following. Uh, and this, the emphasis here, is on the sinners being liberated from the hellfire. That's the emphasis on this particular section in this last segment. So he relates, Rahimahullah, and can it rahmatu lil masinina fal musi'u la yayasu minha. If Allah's mercy is for those who do good, still the sinners should not despair of Allah's mercy. If you're a believer and you fall into sin, you still should not despair. Because why? That is not a trait of the believers. Inna afan, wrong verse. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَاحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَاحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرِينَ عفوا إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ لَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَاحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ It is only a disbelieving folk who despair of Allah's mercy. So brothers and sisters, if you've fallen into sin, just I guarantee you, no one listening to this who might be so broken up by their sin, and think, I can never be a good Muslim because I did A, B, C, and D. I don't care what you did, brothers and sisters. You didn't kill 100 people. And if Allah forgives one who killed 100 people, he can forgive you whatever you've done, which is less than that. Allah give us tawfiq and taste and kabul. So, in kanati rahmatu lil muhsinina fal musi'u لا يأس منها وأن تكون المغفرة مكتوبة للمتقين 
فَالظَّالِمُ لِنَفْسِهِ غَيْرُ مَحْجُوبٌ عَنْهَا And if Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness has been ordained or prescribed for those who are conscious of him, then the oppressor to himself or herself also is not, is not deprived that forgiveness. Then he mentions a couple of lines of poetry. And can Afuka la yarjuhu vu kata in? Faman yajuru ala al asina bil karam. So if your pardoning uh, cannot be hoped for, for one who has fallen into sin, then who is it that the sinners, the rebellious sinners, can can hope to do, can look look for good from. No, Allah Allah's mercy is all encompassing. And another one said, "In Kana la la yarjuka illa al mahsinun, فمن الذي يرجو ويدعو ويدعو الذم مذنب." Now, in Kana la yarjuka illa mahsinun, فمن الذي يرجو ويدعو ويدعو المذنب. He said, "If if uh, you can, if, if only those who do good can hope." have hope in being the recipients of your goodness and grace and mercy, then who is it that those who have sinned can hope for and turn to? Man, Allah can hope for and call upon. No, they call upon Allah. They call upon Allah. Allah loves to forgive sin. Sasan Hadith will translate it very quickly. That Allahumma sallu rasulillah <clears throat> If you Allah loves to forgive sin To summarize the hadith If you were not sinful And then turn to Allah in repentance Allah would do away with you And bring another people who would sin And then turn to him in repentance and this is generally speaking, how much more is this true for Ramadan? How much more is this true for the night, last 10 nights of Ramadan? How much more is this true for the night of Paul, Laylatul Qadr? May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and taysir. May Allah accept from all of us. May Allah give us from the storehouses of his treasures. May Allah Ta'ala give us from the storehouses of his treasures. Uh, so we skip to the, the last page uh, of the chapter of Ramadan. So it's over 100 pages long. May Allah give us tawfiq. And this last section is tens of, of verses of poetry. But we'll just relate a couple of them, starting with this one. This one, Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Attakthruku man tuhibbu wa anta jaru wa tatlubuhum ida ba'da al mazaru. Do you leave off the one that you love while you're their neighbor? And then you seek them out after they've moved to some far off place? تبكي بعد نعيه مشتياقا ونسى وتسأل في المنازل أين ساروا You weep after they've gone away a far distance they're, they're far gone out of your longing for them and then you ask the, the abandoned houses where have they traveled to where have they gone they were right there and you did nothing. Tarakta su'alahum wa humu huduru wa tarju and tu qabbiru kaddiyahu. You've left off asking about them while they were present. And now you're hoping that the houses they once dwelled in can inform you of their, of their news. Man, Allah. فَنَفْسِكَ لُمْ 
So condemn yourself. Don't condemn the various transportation means that have carried them away. So die with a broken heart because you have no excuse. And so what, what are these lines of poetry telling us, brothers and sisters? Don't wait till Ramadan leaves and then start longing for the opportunity to worship and to turn to your Quran and to stand in prayer at night. A, a lot of people, and some justifiably, I, I, I mentioned, I alluded to this uh, last week or the week before this morning. But I, I gave a khutbah, I was very harsh in that khutbah. I apologize to anyone offended. Uh, but the, the harshness was in just uh, condemning those who would argue, uh, who, who would just flee from the masjid after they pray eight rakats. And then the, the imam is there in an empty masjid praying the other 12 by himself. And, and so leaving aside the, the, so I didn't qualify that. The qualification, uh, some people legitimately have to leave early because we're not in a Muslim country. They have to get up early to work. They need to go home and rest. Uh, or, or they have other valid reasons and excuses. But one who has no excuse, the qiyam of Ramadan, especially in the long winter nights, is... As, as important as the siyam. So one hadith man saama Ramadan, iman wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahuma taqaddam min mandambi. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with sincere faith, anticipating a reward, all of their prior sins will be forgiven. Wa man qama Ramadan, iman wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahuma taqaddam min mandambi. Whoever stands for worship during the nights of Ramadan with sincere faith, anticipating a reward, all of their prior sins will be forgiven. And, and so, this opportunity, the qiyam, is qiyam. Qiyamul layl, a significant portion of the night, seeking Allah's forgiveness, seeking Allah's mercy. And fa'ina tadhabun, where are we going to go to watch any Trevor Noah or something? And and Allah Ta'ala is portioning out reward, liberation from hell, forgiveness in the masjid. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysi and kabul. May Allah Ta'ala make things easy for us. So in any case, the, what these verses are saying, don't wait for Ramadan and then long for the opportunity to do good for yourself. We have the opportunity now. Don't wait for Ramadan to be like the beloved of this uh, wretched person. The beloved is there. You don't ask about her, him. Uh, you don't seek out. You don't seek them out. You don't go to visit. Then when they move away, you want to visit, you want to ask how about their news, how are they, are they well, you know, how are they doing with COVID, did they get vaccinated, etc., etc. Now you're asking about their news, they're gone. Don't wait for Ramadan to go to serve Ramadan, to honor Ramadan, to take advantage of Ramadan. It's here now, brothers and sisters, and we're, we're, we're entering into, it's the last 10 days, and we're entering into those days where most likely, we can't say definitively, but most likely, Laylatul Qadr is to be found. So let's take advantage of this opportunity now. Then he says in prose, but very poetic prose, Ya Shahr Ramadan Tarafaqah. Uh, 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 now, Ya month of Ramadan, be gentle with us. The tears of the lovers are pouring forth. 
قلوبهم من عالم الفراق تشقق their hearts from the pain of yourself of being separated from you the pains of your departure are torn asunder some people this is general not anyone listening on this or viewing this uh, live stream none of you but some people it seems like they want ramadan to go like uh, is it eat is it eat they get eatitis as if you know let's get it over with yani push eat back ya allah give us more days literally we will cry we will cry in our masjid when ramadan was leaving because now the gates of mercy have been closed the shaitan have been unchained the opportunities for just the tremendous reward that we talked about during the very first session is gone is gone and so those who ya shahr ramadan tarafaq dumu al muhibbin tudfaq qulubuhum min alam al firaq tashaqaq asa waqt waqf asa waqfatun lil wada'i tudfi'u min nar al shawq ma'hadaq perhaps taking a, a moment to stand and bid farewell would extinguish the fires of longing that have burned perhaps a moment to repent to Allah brothers and sisters during these times during the last night of Ramadan repent any sin you can think of repent repent for perhaps a moment of repentance and ceasing convicting once making a conviction to cease all sins will patch up what's been torn asunder of our fast so idleness lu talk perhaps it will patch those things up asamun qati'un an raqb al maqbulin yalhaq perhaps the one who's been cut off from the procession or caravan of those who have been accepted can catch up with them and despite their sins and shortcomings in these last waning days they will be accepted asa siru al asa siru al auzari perhaps those who have been imprisoned the in the prison of their sins will be liberated asa man istawjab al nar yu'taq perhaps the one who's deserving to be roasted in hell will be liberated from the hell fire asa rahmat al mawla lah al asi yuwaffaq and perhaps the mercy of the lord will reach those who have sinned la ilaha illallah and that's how he concludes this chapter there's a couple lines of poetry with the uh, same meaning asa wa asa min qabli waqt at tafarruq ila kull ma tarju min al khair tartaqi fa yujbar maksur wa yuqbal taib aw yutaq qattaun wa yas'ad man shaqi alhamdulillah then hilallah perhaps perhaps before the time of departure occurs before we see the halal of shawwal perhaps perhaps before the time of departure occurs everything that we hope for for the, the we hope for for prayer for for goodness for of goodness will be elevated that prayer and that desire will be elevated to our lord and he will respond to us and the what's been broken from the fast will be repaired and restored and the 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 
repentance of the penitent will be accepted and the sinner will be liberated from the fires of hell and one who's been destined to be a wretch and perhaps a hell-bound wretch, shaqi, will be entered into the ranks of those who will experience felicity and bliss as su'ada. So may Allah Ta'ala, if we're in the ranks of the sinner, may Allah bless us to be forgiven. If we're in the ranks of the ashqiyya, may Allah bless us to be in the ranks of the su'ada. They have those destined for bliss and felicity. If we're in the ranks of those whose fast has been torn asunder by the mistakes of our tongue, the errors of our eyes, the thoughts that have assailed our hearts, may they all be restored and rendered whole and acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll stop here. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses everyone. Thank everyone for sharing uh, these precious moments of your very busy evenings as you prepare for your tar and your taraweeh and all of the other things that you must undertake, taking time. Alhamdulillah. Wa salat wa salam ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa So there's uh, some questions or comments. We can move to those. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Mr. Aman, okay, one new people got forgiven, but what about the family of the one of the families that were fact Does he need their forgiveness to enter Jannah? Well, the, the circumstances of uh, the lesson from that hadith uh, wasn't focused on the Sharia. Sharia are those affairs that govern human relations. So this, the lessons of the, this hadith were focused on haqiqah. So sharia are those uh, rulings and aspects of our religion that govern human relations and human actions. What we need to do, how we relate to each other. Haqiqah is relates to our Lord and the realities of our Lord. And so the lesson here was from the haqa'iq, and specifically the vastness of our Lord's mercy. And so in, in that sense, the focus was in on the sharia. Also, uh, this was from uh, the ummah. This man was a, a member of one of the ummas that preceded our ummah. And so their sharia would have been different. The haqiqa and aqida never varies, but the sharia varies. And so perhaps the sharia at that time, the man didn't need to do anything. Wallahu alam. Because Allah uh, took care of uh, nurturing and, and reforming those people who are affected. So they didn't need any human agency to be restored and to move beyond their loss and their grief. Wallahu alam. How does one balance hope and fear in a practical sense? By uh, looking, looking at your state, when you are so overwhelmed uh, by fear. So for example, what's the use? I'm just... And that shaqi that Imam Zaid was talking about, the hell-bound wretch. I keep trying, but I keep sinning. And that's when you need to balance that out with hope. Allah forgave the person that killed 100 people. And so am I really that bad of a person that Allah wouldn't forgive me? So I should have hope. And Or the other way around, if you find yourself becoming complacent, and uh, you begin to justify that uh, because of Allah's mercy. You know, Allah understands we're in America. It's hard to be Muslim in America. So if I don't do A, B, and C, Allah understands. It's time to check that with a little fear. 
So just look at when we say, and the key here is balance. When we see ourselves going to one extreme or the other, we balance by reminding ourselves of the other extreme uh, from the one that uh, is affecting us disproportionately, and then we balance that out. Allah Sometimes when trying to make the most of the blessed times of Ramadan, it becomes a stressful experience. I, I, get, I, I get a feeling that I could have done more and that I'm not doing enough. How can I prevent it from becoming a stressful experience? Do more dhikr and don't worry about it. See, you're, you're doing too much fikr. You need to do more dhikr because dhikr is quicker. Uh, seriously, you know, because... Uh, when, when we're remembering Allah, as we become more adept at the practice, we forget about the world. It's like being in a garden. And when you're in a garden, you're remembering Allah. Well, there's the revealed book, the scripture, the Quran. Excuse me. And then there's the, the book of, of nature. And both of them point to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you're out in your garden, two hours, three hours go by, you're not thinking about the world. You're not thinking about the George Floyd verdict. You're not thinking about uh, the, the, the kid who got shot in Chicago with his hands up. You're not thinking about the COVID situation in India. And we should be praying for our brothers and sisters there, both Muslim and in humanity generally. It's a really terrible situation, much, much worse than what the news is even presenting. But you're not thinking about all of that. You're, you're either directly or indirectly thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you, you uh, just make more dhikr. And never see yourself uh, as stressed out by worship. And so we mentioned dhikr, right? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَطَطْمَئِنُوا قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ طَطْمَئِنُوا ذَقُلُوبُ Those who believe and their hearts find relaxation, comfort, in the remembrance of Allah. Verily, the remembrance of Allah brings comfort to the heart. The opposite of stress. So I'm not just saying dhikr more because I want you to be a Sufi. I'm saying dhikr more because Allah Ta'ala told us that the remembrance of Allah brings comfort to the heart and comfort and relaxation and all of the meanings uh, involved in tatma in nu are the opposite of stress. Allah, how would you advise someone who is struggling to leave sins because the people they spend their time with are involved in them? For example, backbiting. Cut those people off. And that's that's a very difficult one to avoid. In other words, to avoid sinning yourself if you're around sinners. Like a friend of mine, I call him Mustafa the ghetto philosopher. Brother Mustafa, the ghetto philosopher. So, Brother Mustafa once said, you know what, Ah? Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. And so, the, <laughs> and he also said, relevant to this particular question, you know what, Ah? That he would, dis he would introduce his, gems and bezels of wisdom. You know what, I said, you know what, I, if you hang around in public bathrooms, you're going to get some filth on yourself sooner or later. And so that's relevant to this person spending time with the backbiters and the people who curse and use profanity. If you hang out in public bathrooms, sooner or later, you're going to get some filth on yourself. And so you have to cut them off. Prophet وسلم, said, Al Maru Aladini Khadilihi Falyanvur Ahadukum Manu Khadil. A person is on the religion of their companion. Let everyone consider well the company they keep. 
So if you're hanging out with backbiters, you're going to eventually backbite. And if you're hanging out with righteous people, you're going to become more righteous. But so here you are, you're coming, you're afraid, you're like, I'm cutting those people off. Imam say, he said it, it's official, cut them off, I'm cutting them off. And now you start hanging out uh, around more righteous people. But you still have some bad habits. And so if you, you're talking about something, you say, yeah, man, you know, and the muddy puppies, they did. And then everyone looks at you like, what did you just say? I over been there. The next time, you know what those, oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, brothers. And then in a week or so, you're not going to be using that language anymore. And so a person is on the religion of their companions. So you need different companionship. And not, not permanently, just tell them, listen, I don't call you anymore. I don't talk with you anymore because when I talk with you, I called you and, and we get in conversation, I inevitably been, end up backbiting people. So I'm just fearing. And then so the person, you know, oh, the Bilal, you know, I'll try not to do that. Please forgive me. Uh, so it's not permanent. And they, they clean up their act and then you go back to being their friends. If they don't clean up the act, you just cut, cut them off. So many. Alhamdulillah. Are there any sunnah du'as that can make to ask Allah for his love? Of course. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Literally, oh Allah, I ask you for your love. This is sahih. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Ya Allah, I ask you for your love. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Wa hubba man yuhibbu. And the love of those who love you. So we're just talking about changing your company. Being around people who love Allah is going to help you to love Allah. So, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Ya Allah, I ask you for your love. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And the love of those who love you. Wa hubba al-amali ladhi yuballighuna hubbak. And love of the action that draws us close to your love. So there are du'as. And that's one of them. What is the role of self-doubt or guilt during these last sin? When our efforts in our fall short of our elders and teachers it is helpful. Or is you should you're not in a race with your elders and teachers. You're 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 standing alone. As with children recently, one of them just loves. Native deem, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah's on my side, everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna keep my head up high. It they got me doing it. But you're going to stand alone. You're going to stand alone. The elders aren't gonna be there. So you're not in a competition with you. You can be inspired by them, but ultimately. You have to look at what you're capable of doing under the circumstances that you're in, that you are in, in the circumstances like Allah Ta'ala has placed you in. And then you just do your best. It's not, it's not the, as he said, mu'awwal ala al-qabool. Wala ala al-ijtihad. So the consideration is the acceptability and not the our exertion necessarily. And so just make sure what you're doing is acceptable, that it's done with sincerity and that it's done in accordance with the relevant uh, prophetic, the things of the prophetic example that's relevant to it. And then you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma. And so don't, don't see yourself as falling short. Just see yourself as trying. And if you fall short, especially the elders and some of the teachers who are, are people, the elders particularly, these are people who are spiritual giants. And so they, they're on an entirely different level. And when you compare yourself to them, it's going to be frustrating. So don't compare yourself to them or any of your contemporaries. Just do the best that you can do.
be the best Muslim that you can be and let Allah take care of everything else uh, even though we shouldn't obsess ourselves with the latest news like the two events you mentioned could we instead spend more time praying for the well-being sin and guidance of them of, of course that's that's our prayer we're going to pray for people in india bangladesh people uh our families communities of course that, that's dua and we should make dua abundantly and copiously there's a section in the book but uh there wasn't much poetry there but so I didn't mention it, but uh, there's a section on dua when you break your fast. And that's a time when the prayers are answered. So you should pray for your family, pray for the sick, pray for your friends, pray for yourself. And then either before or after that prayer, ask Allah for his pleasure and jannah and to protect you from his anger and hellfire. Allahumma in Allahumma in Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah wa na'udhu bika min saqatika wal nar and I seek ref Allah I ask you for your pleasure in jannah I seek refuge from you with you from your anger and from the fire of hell. And, and so prayer is a big, big part of Ramadan. And this is generally a time when the prayers are answered and times like, excuse me, when we break our fast, those are specific times where du'a is answered. So pray for everyone, including folks in India. Uh, but try to focus on your ibadah. The world's not gonna go anywhere. No, and in 10 days or so, 10, 12 days, India is going to be there. You'll have plenty of opportunity to join a campaign, start a campaign to help bring a little bit of relief. Uh, the Whatever is vexing you is likely to still be there. So it's not going anywhere. So if we could take a little time, just give that to Allah. The musabbib, the one who has created all of these causes and means in the world. If we could focus on musabbib, then the as asbab, the causes themselves will take care of themselves by Allah's decree and arrangement. So we should do our best. I'm fading fast, so we have to cap it there and we, we pray that uh, that Allah Ta'ala makes it easy for everyone yeah. and then let me say this on that last question you know there are those who say that the battle of Badr took place in Ramadan so the Muslims are actively engaged in worldly affairs and this great battle and they had tawfiq and we need a new batter, etc uh, they make that argument and the Fatih Mecca was in the conquest of Mecca was in Ramadan so being involved with the world and that's an argument uh, but these are precious days and nights that the opportunity that we have might never return to us You know, we don't know if this is our last Ramadan or not Someone, uh, Chaplain uh, Suhaib Sultan, Rahimullah, beautiful young brother. Someone said 18 months ago, uh, you're going to be gone. Uh, he, he might not believe it. He, he's a strong believer. He wouldn't consider it impossible or far-fetched, but being young, probably would say, you know, I don't, inshallah, I'll be around. He's gone, rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy on him. Uh, and, and may Allah give patience and assistance to his family. Uh, so uh, the point is, uh, we don't know if this opportunity uh, will come again. So we're spending hours and hours in front of the television. 
on the on the assumption it's mubah, it's not simple. You can make an argument it's sinful, but on the assumption it's not sinful. You're not earning any ajr. Mubahat, there's no ajr, there's no punishment. There's no reward, there's no punishment. And so the 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 gifts of Ramadan, our receiving those gifts, as we mentioned, is contingent upon the state of our heart. And our heart is softened and our heart is nurtured. By our devotional actions, by dhikr, mention. So it's comfort and peace to the heart is brought about by the dhikr of Allah. So you don't you don't know if you have the opportunity. Tasbihatun, we mentioned this twice, this is the third time. Ibrahim and Naqai, Rahimullah. Tasbihatun wahidatun fi Ramadan ka alfi tasbihatun fi masiwa. Saying Subhanallah, glorified art thou Allah. One time in Ramadan is like saying it a thousand times outside of Ramadan. So this great opportunity, we don't know if it's going to occur again. So if we spend our time in Mubahat, we're not earning edge for our soul, but if we're spending our time, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha Allah akbar. Now we're earning edge for ourselves. Kalimatani, khafifatani ala lisan, habibatani illa rahman, thaqilatani fil mizan, subhanAllah wa bihamdihi subhanAllah wa So two expressions, they are light on the tongue, have a beloved to the most merciful and uh, great, great, and uh, and very weighty in the scale. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah So what if we're saying that abundantly in Ramadan? It's going to change our lives. People whose lives were changed go on and change the world. But people who just, you know, I'm Muslim, yeah, you know, we just, I'm doing that, we got people, nothing special. That's not going to change the world, brothers and sisters. You know, it's, it's permissible. I did my Tarawi. I could sit back and kick back and watch Trevor Noah. You know, so in other words, just getting by, just doing enough, checking all the boxes. It's not going to change the world. We need people who are passionately committed to this religion. Those are the people that are going to make big changes in the world. Inshallah ta'ala if Allah so wills. So we'll stop here. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give you tawfiq and tasir. It's been a great honor to engage in the program. And uh, may Allah bless us to be able to do it again some future date or to continue from where we left off. So I uh, bid you all a, a nice evening. مساء الخير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.